All over the world, there is a condition that infects many children every year. And even though there are very few studies done on this condition, close family members often observe symptoms around four or five years of age. Once a child has caught the horse bug, it will stay with them their entire lives. Treatment for this condition is simple. The child must be provided with a suitable equine companion. However, this does create a lot of financial problems for most families. I do suffer from this condition and I have found five free ways to get involved in horses that you may not know about. Traditionally, horses are something that only the very wealthy can afford. They are a luxury item just like an expensive handbag or a pair of shoes. And in the equestrian world, horse racing is still called the sport of kings. While this level of luxury is still unattainable for most of us peasant folk, there are a few ways to wiggle yourself into the horse world that are free or almost free. I'm sure there are other ways to get involved in horses, but these are just a few of the ones that I used while I was coming up in the horse world. The first very inexpensive way to get involved with horses is through 4-H. This program is run by the United States Department of Agriculture. And although many people associate 4-H with livestock, there are tons of programs catering to all different types of children and their interests. They have a program for poultry as well as goats. They also have opportunities for STEM learning as well as horticulture. Of course, they also have a program for horses. These programs are not limited to those who own their own animals. When I joined 4-H, I was able to use one of the 4-H leaders horses. They also have a program for a horseless project. There are various levels so you can move up in the ranks as you learn about different areas of basic horse care. These programs are perfect for those who know nothing about horses and are wanting to learn. Some other programs you may have access to are the packing program, the horse judging program, and my favorite by far was the horse bowl or trivia program that they did. I was a big horse nerd and it was just like horse jeopardy. While I mostly trail rode and enjoyed my horse, we went to one show a year for 4-H that was a pretty big deal to us. This was a horse that I borrowed from our 4-H leader and then I actually ended up purchasing him when I was older. Some of you may recognize Frisco Bill. This is when he was quite young showing in 4-H. When my time in 4-H was coming to a close, I had to find a different way to be involved in horses that was not expensive. I was already used to working a regular job to afford the one horse that I had. So when I went around to look at colleges, I made sure that they all had some type of equestrian program. When I was first looking at schools, I did want to become a veterinarian. But in the back of my mind, I had this thought that maybe instead I could just go and ride horses. Many big universities had equestrian teams, but I opted to go to schools that had an active IHSA team. This association was specifically made so that any level of rider and financial status could participate in showing horses at a collegiate level. This program allowed people who had never even sat on a horse before to learn the basics of handling and riding horses in a show setting. It also gave more seasoned riders a way to improve their skill with great horses and excellent coaching. I had always wanted to show my horse more, but it was just financially not available to me. So this was a good way for me to get my feet wet and get in the show ring. I did end up taking Frisco Bill to college with me, but after the first semester, I realized that I just did not have time to be active in their equestrian team. The university I ended up attending was extremely expensive, and while I got many scholarships to attend, I still had to have a job. 
I got a job as a teacher's assistant in a biology lab, but as time went on, I could feel my condition worsening and I needed to get myself around more horses. I ended up convincing one of the instructors to hire me and worked every extra minute I had learning about training horses. It didn't take me long to realize that I would get the opportunity to ride a lot more horses if I volunteered myself for the ones that nobody else wanted to ride. Horses that were difficult or unruly, I found a way to get along with. I also began to understand what it took to keep horses in shape and competitive at a very high level. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in equestrian science and biochemistry. I had decided that I really just wanted to train horses, so I took a job with a breeder. I was in charge of starting all the two-year-olds and getting the older horses ready to be shown. After being involved in that part of the industry for a few years, I decided that it just was not for me. I was working insane hours for very little money, and in the end, I decided to make a change. I still had my horse Frisco Bill and I wanted to buy him a friend to enjoy so I was going to have to get a real job. I had always planned to use my biology degree in case the horses didn't work out but I just couldn't get hired anywhere. And that is when I stumbled upon this website. I needed a change of pace and it just seemed like a good idea to get a job somewhere where people vacation to. You can filter all different kinds of options, including employee housing. I found that there was a plethora of jobs that I could apply to and that I was highly qualified for. Most of the jobs advertised were for leading trail rides, which I certainly could do. The thought of having two whole days off a week was also very enticing to me. Most of these places cater to guests who've never ridden before and just want to experience the Western lifestyle. I applied for jobs all over, including the Grand Canyon. I had never ridden a mule before, but it seemed like they would be pretty much the same as a horse. Looking back now, I'm so glad I didn't get that job. I also applied in places like Yellowstone, the Tetons. I even applied for a packing job in Yosemite. I pretty much applied for any job where I got to ride horses in a beautiful place. This website is still running today and as you can see they have tons of jobs all over the United States. Here are just a few in Montana. Even if you don't have any experience with horses at all, you can get a pretty cool job on this website. And for any of my friends outside the United States, they also have a section where you can apply if you are coming over on a working visa. While my plan was to get one of these jobs, I did have to work in order to pay off some of my student loans. I ended up working overnight baking and decorating donuts, and then I worked during the day at a gas station. And if you ever need a boost to make some radical decisions in your life, I would suggest getting a job that you hate, working around people that treat you very poorly. I remember this being a very pivotal point in my life. I had worked so hard towards my dream of becoming a horse trainer, and when I decided it just wasn't the right fit for me, it kind of broke my heart. I also remember the day that I kept getting phone calls from a really strange number all day long. When I finally answered, I found out that it was one of the jobs that I had applied to. After a phone interview, they decided they wanted to fly me out for a riding interview. I ended up taking the interview, but in the process, I lost both of my other jobs. Luckily, when I got there and rode a few horses, they really liked what they saw and I ended up getting a job offer. A few months later, I was riding horses on an almost 20,000 acre ranch. This ended up being exactly what I needed. I really enjoyed getting to ride horses that had an actual job. This was the cutest little Appaloosa mare I got to ride for work. I also got to use my skills to teach people to ride that have never even been on a horse before, which was pretty neat. 
like most other dude ranches out west, there are several opportunities to get hired even if you don't ride horses. Many will have separate programs like fly fishing and hiking. Another really good way to get a job on one of these ranches is as a chef or a line cook. Most of these outfits are pretty remote so if you come for one job you might be tagged in for another. I was able to learn how to pack in my time off. I also went on some pretty crazy trail rides. Because of my degree and my years working as a horse trainer, I eventually ended up getting a job running the program at a Four Diamond Resort. This allowed me to do some pretty cool things like start a Mustang training program. I did begin to show again and it was totally different when I took the Mustangs out. I didn't feel as much pressure as I did before and that job was probably one of my favorites. It was really nice to have a steady paying job with a 401k and days off and still get to be around horses all the time. I eventually realized that it was never going to be 100% my program so I decided to move on. I had thought really hard about going back to school to become a veterinarian. But before I put a lot of time and effort into it, I decided I should probably just get a job working at a clinic to see if I even liked it. Since I had been around horses so much, I had a pretty good idea of what it entailed. I had discovered many years ago that if you're willing to do the jobs that no one else is, that it will be much easier to get them. I ended up getting a job as a veterinary technician at an emergency hospital. I worked overnights which was perfect because at the time I was starting to rescue horses again. It was super exciting to be part of the fast pace of emergency surgery, but very taxing emotionally when there were animals that were brought in and we could do nothing to help them. I stayed at this job for a few years but eventually I got burnt out. One of the best things to come out of it was my dog Huckleberry. He got hit by a car and his owners couldn't afford the surgery so I decided to buy him from them. It didn't seem like the smartest decision at the time because we were living in a house that did not allow any pets. We ended up living in the back of a truck and then a small camper for much longer than I would have liked. Somehow the stars finally aligned and I found this place to rent. Without it, there is no way I would be able to help as many horses as I do. All of the twists and turns my life has taken so far has led me exactly to this moment and I think I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I hope my journey has given a few of you some ideas if you're trying to get into horses and don't know exactly where to start. There are always going to be opportunities for those who want to work hard and are willing to put in the time and effort that others are not. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.